Hello viewers, today we will be modifying this Isotel Ultra Power Bar to make it work again. I don't want to call this a repair video because we're not going to be repairing the surge protection and filtering element of it. We're just going to be discarding that because what's happened is here, I'll plug this in and you can see what transpires. When I plug this in and I turn it on, we get a fault indicator. Now what happens is the surge protecting aspect of a lot of these protectors is kind of like a one-time use thing in the event of a really drastic surge. And so if this has been through like a lightning strike for instance, it'll probably have protected the equipment but the surge protecting items circuitry no longer will work after that. So if I plug this in here, I believe we'll get no power. Yeah, we get no power. So this one is made correctly because this one, when that one time strike hits and the surge protection is no longer working, it cuts the power to the rest of the machine. There's other power bars that don't seem to cut the power to the rest of it, they just leave it unprotected. So anyways, these are very good protectors, they're very expensive. And in this case, I want to keep using this one, even though it doesn't have protection, because in this particular use case, it would be plugged into something else that's already protecting. So it would be after protection anyways, so it doesn't really matter. So, we're going to begin by opening this up. I'm not really sure how this opens up. I've never worked on one of these before. But we're going to find out now. All the screws are removed. So now we can... We can slide this bottom cover off take a look inside it's quite bent so I don't see in here any any like fiery failures or anything hmm I'm not sure what's wrong here. Well, anyways, we're just going to rewire this such that it's just a regular power bar where the power comes in and it goes to the outlets and that's it. There won't be any surge protection. So the first thing I'm going to do is I need to remove this circuit board from here which may be done by these three screws, I'm not certain. I wish I knew more about how these work because this is a very simple board and if you could find out which component is spoiled, probably would be fairly easy to repair. So I'm going to remove this board in a way that's non-destructive. And if there becomes a day where I feel like gathering some more information and trying to repair this, I will make a follow video. So for now what we're going to do is we're going to remove this grounding wire and that will get attached directly onto the outlets and we're going to remove this
and then we're going to also remove this black wire and we're going to remove well that's not useful anymore so we'll just cut that off as I said we could pull that off but we know where to put that on to so it doesn't really matter and then I don't know if this is self-standing or not. A line load, maybe. Uh, it may be. That may be. So we'll we'll keep that in in play, uh, just in case that is. I don't think there's anything on here it would interface because that that's before. Yeah. So then this would still be okay. That's just an overload. We can keep that in the line. Uh, we'll take this neutral off of there. And that will separate the board from the unit, and from the housing. So now the next challenge is going to be getting these outlets off of here because they're soldered into the board. And so there's going to be two challenges with that. Number one is getting that undone, which I may just cut it down there. It's probably the easiest way to do it. But number two is going to be getting the, the soldering studs out of there so we can stick a wire in there instead. This one I'm having a hard time reaching. Okay, so that's removed, and I'm going to take this off here because we'll reuse that, and this wire is too short to be useful, so let's see if I can pull that out. I'm not quite sure how, if these work the way the... Um, kind of the way like a switch does where you can stick something in there and release the holding mechanism I'm sure whatever's in there is much sturdier than a uh, basic switch would be that doesn't fit in there I have a suspicion that that's really not removable I know it's not meant to come out but I'm not sure if there is any way to oh there we go. I guess if we just do that, it'll come out. Okay, so that's out. Let's see if we can do that with the the solder joints as well. Hopefully, there's enough to grab on here. Okay, so that will work to get that out.
The Atwoods are now freed. So what we have to do next is rewire this into the unit here. I initially thought that, and I didn't really think this through very well, but I thought we could just jump her from here to, to there and then like that, but going like that will put them in series. We, it can't be like that, it's got to be in parallel. So I'm going to take some Romex here and I'm going to connect the six wires up to the outlet so we'll make two junctions, one of them on here and uh, oh I gotta figure out how that return works I'll put this on the meter to confirm it but I believe this is extraneous here at least in this use case so the the low side should just go back on there like that This is a 12 gauge, which is too big. This is 14, so then we have to use this instead. Alright, so that's what we'll do for the outlets. Now the grounding, I think all we need to do is loop this onto there and that would ground everything. I don't like the way that was going on there and since there's enough extra wire here and I don't have another terminal I guess I could just take the one off there but I'm gonna do something here differently I'm gonna cut this back again now, this is very difficult to get off of here for some reason and I'm not really Sure. Oops. Jeez. Well, there's the first outtake of the year. I'm not really sure why this is so difficult to get off of here. But it just is. Okay, now we just cut into there. Okay. We're not going to do that. It's not cooperating. I'm going to join it with this other wire that had the thing on here. And I'll just cut this off of here. This is what it's going to look like. Pretty clean setup.
before I plug anything into it, I'm going to confirm the accuracy of my work with a multimeter. I'm going to set the multimeter to continuity mode and I'm going to put one terminal on the neutral side and we should get a neutral reading on each outlet and nowhere else. Which seems to be the case. I'm going to turn it off and that should not change. Okay, now we're going to go to the high side, and since this is in the off position, there should be nothing. That appears to be the case, so we'll turn it on. Okay, that all looks good. Now we'll check the ground. Okay, so that appears to be good. Now we'll plug it in. Housing does not appear to be live, as it shouldn't be. The housing is not live. Okay, that appears to be working correctly. Now I'll plug in the kilowatts meter here. And we're getting 119. Should be getting that out of every outlet. happen. I must have hit the switch as I plugged it in. Okay, so that's that. This is ready to use. I'm just going to make a notation on here. No surge. And of course it should be obvious to, to me as I plug it in because the lights are not there to say that it's working. And it should be obvious to anybody else should somebody else happen to use this that this is not working. So now I can continue to use this in the use case that I have in mind. And that's much better than just tossing it out.